Welcome back everybody, you with OG and today I've built you something special, a flying bedstead. But first, more speed record settings. I haven't set any new records, but I have built some new vehicles and I thought I'd just show you how I've been doing. I've come very close to my previous record. I made it over a thousand quite easily with this car and with the updated version of this car but I can't get to my old record yet I found I could eject my Kerbal at this stage of the run and save the Kerbal's life and some people seem to like saving the Kerbal lives so as I explained in my last video I really don't care about that. Then this is the second version, one with two big mammoth engines on the side of a Clydesdale and a couple more smaller engines on top. But this one, it it doesn't want to run straight. Can't keep it on the runway, so that one just goes off to the left. Heading for all the manned buildings over there. Though it doesn't quite make it that far. And then this one, well, it prefers going off to the right. Luckily there are no collisions with trees yet. But this is what I'm building today. The flying bedstead. The flying bedstead was built for the Apollo program as a training tool for Apollo astronauts. One damn nearly killed Neil Armstrong, but he ejected and survived. And I've tried to recreate it here today. Take note there is another flying bedstead that was built uh, before they built the Harrier jump jet. It was an engine testing platform. Same name, different thing. Okay, technically it's not called the Flying Bedstead at all, that's just a nickname. It's something like the Lunar Training Module Bed thing. So yeah, we have Val giving it a test flight. And she's made it up. I was a little taken aback with just how quickly it rose into the air. I wasn't quite wanting that. Also I wanted to be by the runways, but I always forget to change the setting in the VAB, which spits you out on the runways. I've spat many planes out onto launch pads and they break instantly. But I found I had some control and I started flying Val over towards the runways. Unfortunately I started flying too fast and then aerodynamics kind of took over and I think her little cubicle thing creates a lot of drag and uh, it swung the thing around. But I was not deterred and Val was not deterred and even though this thing got to some hair raising angles I managed to always keep it in the air the little RCS thrusters near the landing legs, they really help, though there is a very limited amount of both monopropellant and fuel in this craft because there just wasn't much on the original and I, I've got nowhere to hide with this thing because it's all just like a skeletal design, you can see all the tanks and things, so I could only put the tanks on that they had on the original. I, I tried to make it as original looking as possible. So sadly the fuel is limited and that has consequences. Because here is Val trying to go in for a soft landing and she's 118 meters up and suddenly there's a fuel issue. So, like a good program director, I zoomed out to get it all on film. Sorry Val. 
Having recovered from her crash and newly released from hospital, we put her back in the cockpit. Or pilot seat, that's not really much of a cockpit, is it? And then I decided to do an altitude run. See how high this thing could go, how fast it could climb. Once again, the fuel limit is a bit of a problem. You can't just keep climbing forever. And then I got to the clouds and I got into the 2000s and I got bored with climbing. It's quite pretty up there. You can see everything nicely. But I'm still having this problem with the graphics and clouds. So they still look all liney and they make this stupid haze around my vehicles, which I really hate. But hey, there's a patch coming out soon. Thursday, so let's hope. I doubt they fixed that. I've heard nothing about them fixing that. But one can hope. Anyway, so Val is now here cruising around 2000 meters and once again we are running out of fuel. <laughs> so in we come for another attempt at a safe landing. And there we're out of fuel again. So I try to eject her, but she can't leave her seat for some reason. The design just doesn't allow it. So sorry about that, Val. Try to put you on EVA. Not that she has a parachute anyway, but at least then she's not falling with a large metal structure. So then I did a little bit of redesign and I popped Val back into the air with the hope of testing my modifications. All right, Val, let's show them what mods we've added to this. You can see I built a little console in front of her, sort of like the original has in the pictures, but that's not the mod I'm talking about. The mod I'm talking about is to help Val land safely because green lives matter. And we are out of fuel. What are you running on, Val? Fumes. Oh, there we go. No more fuel. Val, what will you do? Eject! Whee! Okay, so that is merely the smallest SRB attached to the back of a chair and mounted on a decoupler. But hey, it got her free of the craft. Sadly, I never found her. So her twin sister, Val, came over and we decided to test it straight off the pad. That went well. And I thought I'd killed her. And then I looked closely and there was something spinning. Now, I've had many crashes in KSP 1 and 2 where parts have started spinning. There were some in my last video, the land speed record, some wheels or something that was spinning around in the water. But I've never seen a Kerbal spin like this before. Continually just spinning head over heels. So Val, and you can see there with the mouse cursor showing where she is, Val is now the unofficial World Somersault Champion. She could win the tumbling category in gymnastics any day, anywhere, anytime. It is disturbing the noises she makes. This metallic clang of her helmet against the asphalt of the road. And I was expecting her to slow down and stop, but yeah, she's bouncing pretty much out of the space center area. Still going strong. So I thought maybe the water would stop her. She'd have a little one woman splashdown. Well, she splashed into the water, but it didn't stop her spinning. And Val was last seen spinning across the lake bed. I zoomed out and I waited for her on the other side. But sadly, even though I waited quite a long time, 
Val never appeared. So Val, or Val's twin sister, was lost at sea, missing in action. But don't worry, don't tell anyone, but I have a save game. I will reload, and Val will be back. Thank you for joining me on another Kerbal adventure. I hope you enjoyed the flying bedstead. And I hope you look forward to me doing more land speed record attempts. And I will see you soon. OG out. Thank you.